Hello and welcome. Today we have something very special. This main board came to me by a viewer for the very first time that I ever had. And this came all the way from Finland. So thank you very much for the one sending it in. And not only that, but he also sent me some candy because this is licorice. So thank you very much for that. I will be enjoying that later after I'm done with this main board. This is a Gigabyte Z390 UD. UD stands for ultra durable if you didn't know. And this came in because of stuck DRAM LED. So we have postcodes, uh, post LEDs in the bottom right right here. And it was supposed to be stuck on DRAM. As I can see, there's no backup BIOS chip on here. So this only operates with the single BIOS as far as it seems. Because this seems like it never was soldered. And there's all the, um, all the circuitry is missing for the switching of the dual BIOSes. So we're going to see why this has failure on DRAM. Um, this is, I think, 10th gen supports 9th gen. Intel Core i processors. Okay, so I have to look out again what Z390 takes, what I have. Let me quickly build this up and we're going to have a look at this in one second. So now the processor's in. And the first thing I would do, because I know we have DRAM issues, I would uh, plug in the DRAM tester and see if we have any broken lines to our DDR or to our uh, processor. So let's see. So there is some flickering as soon as you wobble it. But as far as I can see, none of those are essential that I'm missing. So these in the middle shouldn't be lit and these um, that are marked in Sharpie should also, shouldn't also be lit. So I don't think we have any problem with the actual connection of the data line. So that is very interesting. So one more thing I would expect is um, if we have DRAM issues, it to be a BIOS issue. We should, uh, shall first test this board now with building it actually up and see how far it gets in its boot status. And now we have the board built up with everything we need. Let's look at the power consumption, uh, 160 to 170 milliamps. And now let's connect the power button and see how this behaves. Okay, switched off, switched on, switched off, switched on. And we we'll also have boot LEDs here, CPU, DRAM, CPU, DRAM. And also the postcodes right here are cycling. These are not cycling, but these seem to cycle indefinitely with CPU and DRAM. And now it turned off, let's see. Still doing exactly the same thing so I think it tries then to access a different BIOS, but it cannot. The thing is we don't have any pin headers on here that are connected to the BIOS. So if I would want to flash the BIOS, which I do want right now, um, I would need to, to take the chip off. But I think that is what we have to do because we actually access the BIOS. There's a lot of postcodes running that, um, but I would expect it to have already posted and um, what we're first going to do before I flash the bias I'm going to try different positions of the RAM but that shouldn't affect it oh and right now I was trying in different RAM slots and we had change it actually did something different we actually got all the way to VGA and to B2 on my tester but it is rapidly restarting by itself uh, but we are in BIOS. So we didn't get anything on the first two RAM slots. That is very interesting. Let's shut this off once more. Let's try the fourth RAM slot. And our fourth slot seems also to be working. So we have two RAM slots that we know do work. As you can see, I can enter the BIOS right there. So let's turn this off once more. And let's try, please turn off. And let's try again in one of the other two slots but before that i'm going to be cleaning them by applying um ipa again to the ddr and then plugging it in and uh, taking it out multiple times we're going to see if that has any change for uh, the behavior of our board regarding the first two ddr slots 
So now with having it multiple times plugged in and out, let's see if we're going to have any significant difference in our other DDR slots. No, I think we are stuck with these two RAM slots. This is rebooting again. Let's turn this off and try it with the very first one once more. So the first slot seems to do the same thing as and the second slot. So we know with the third and fourth we can get into BIOS. So I have two different two different things that I want to check later. First thing is I want to flash the BIOS to see if then we get uh, connectivity to those slots. And the other thing is I want to double check with my DDR tester to see for the data lines in both of those first slots. But let's for now, I'm going to get a cooler mounted onto here so that we can in peace um, flash the BIOS while we have it in the third and fourth slot. So right now we are in BIOS and the first thing that we want to check is which kind of BIOS version we are um, on right now. So let's see if we go to F8 into the Q flash. Okay, it doesn't want to show us that. So I first need to plug in a medium that has a BIOS already and then we can check. Let me quickly do that. So currently we are on BIOS version uh, F9. We're going to save that. Uh, we're going to call it back up. We're going to save this. And after having saved it, we are now going to try if we can revert to the F8 BIOS. And let's see if that works. And now we're rebooting. So we now still get a boot. And now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it off and we're going to see if I can insert it into the, one of the first slots and if we get boot out of this. And we still have the same issue. As you can see, if we go down here, we're still stuck on DRAM LED. So that didn't help for the RAM slots. So next thing I would uh, want to do now is I want to check with the DDR tester once more and then I will check for physical damage. If there's anything that is knocked off that it should be routed to these two RAM slots. So none of the um, slots seem to be damaged in terms of the DDR. So this shouldn't be the issue. So what I now expect is that there's some voltage not reaching those memory dims probably. And I would expect that there's maybe a resistor somewhere missing or maybe a line somewhere broken. And we're going to check that. We're going to see around the um, RAM slots where the voltages are being created. And we're also going to see at the back if I can see any damage there. And yeah, we need to find out why those two aren't working. I never had it that RAM slots were not working while um, the DDR tester actually didn't show any damage. But we're going to see if we're going to find anything physically here. Let me have a look. So as you can see, we now have actually BIOS while being in the second slot. Um, what I've done is I've spent quite some time looking around this board and I couldn't find anything, like absolutely nothing. Um, I was a actually, like I looked around so much for what could be wrong, um, like around the voltages and everything. But the only thing that I saw is that some of the pins in the socket actually, actually seem to be pressed down. So all I did was to lift some of those up a little bit. Um, none of them looked like they were uh, bent in any form of weird direction. But the only thing I was able to see, not even under the microscope, but holding it against the light, I saw that some of the pins were da bent down a little bit. And now we actually got a boot out of that. So let's now populate this fully and see if we can get all the 20 gigs of RAM to be recognized. S um, sorry to not have filmed everything of it, but I've spent like an hour looking around stuff and I at some point I was just like yeah I uh, there's so much footage already of nothing happening I'm just going to use footage as soon as I actually see something or I actually get further in any way and now we did and now I got you back so let's now get this on so you can see the LEDs in the bottom right and 
we have all four dims populated right now and let's see if we get any change the picture that you see right now in the top right is the still image from what we had before and let's see we are on dram and we cycle dram and we still cycle dram oh that's not great that's not great at all okay so um let me take out this very first dim and we don't have a boot anymore hmm so let's turn this off get this stick out and if we now turn it on so let's get down again until we get a boot out of a single one and then we're going to see further so let's now only have this third one in so what now we get boot out of a single stick we got further than DRAM we should go into BIOS every second and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to be adding one stick after another to see when uh, when we will have no further option to to boot up anymore so let me do that quickly so right now we have boot out of two RAM stacks and let's continue this on and right now you can see we have boot out of three RAM sticks and let's see if we can connect the last one and still get the uh, the result. And we finally come to the point where all four DIMMs are recognized as you can see and all are working. That is very good to know. I'm going to do my usual tests here. Um, but yeah, this board is fixed. This was a very interesting case where I don't know how that happens that so many uh, pins got bent down the way they were because as you could see on our DDR tester that we used all of the ones had good contact so we didn't see any missing LEDs at all so all seem to have good contact but seem like to not reach the CPU in this case because these first, uh, first two slots just didn't want to work but now they're working and I only was able to see that when twisting uh, the board under the light and seeing the pins and I didn't really do much to them. I just got go went under the pin with the um with the tweezers just a little bit with like the tip and then lifted it up a little bit. Like I've I haven't really done anything to them but now as you can see they are working. So this is another thing that you should check that the pins aren't bent down too much and who knows, maybe if I'm taking out the CPU and trying to put it in again, it won't work. So, with every single w time that you put in the CPU, as soon as you have band pins in the socket, every time it could uh, have a different result. So, putting the CPU and especially also the cooler on with uh, the amount of mounting pressure you're putting on, it could also change. So, I, I'm not sure if I could ever pass this board on to someone in a good faith of knowing, okay, um, that... They, that it's going to work for them with every single dim slot but for this time I'm done with this repair I'm going to eat some nice licorice now panda paper thank you very much thank you very much for the opportunity to fix this mainboard that you send it all the way from Finland here and thank you very much for watching hope you have a good time hope you learned something you enjoyed the video and this has been mainboard medic thank you very much and goodbye